channel. My name is Shirley Howard and I'm a fashion reseller on Poshmark, eBay, Etsy, and Facebook Marketplace. If you're interested in any of those platforms or fashion reselling, hit that subscribe button below to be notified when new videos are released. Hit the notification bell if you'd like to have a sound when new videos are released. So today is another strategy video and I'm very serious about strategy in 2021. And I'm going to tell you the things that I am doing to be successful as an online fashion reseller. My advice is you need to be cross-listing your items if you want to sell more in 2021. You may notice I listed four platforms at the beginning of this video. Poshmark is still my number one focus eBay is definitely my number two focus and I'm already listing more items on eBay. So my goal is to cross list the 800 and some items I have on Poshmark to eBay. I have vintage items that I'm going to put on Etsy and Facebook Marketplace is always there if you want to list things for people in your neighborhood or your area to be able to pick up. So there's multiple platforms out there. So I'm just going to back it up for a second. Amazon, and there's people out there that are selling on Amazon, it's a $275 billion a year company. $275 billion. eBay, about $12 billion per year. Poshmark, a billion. So it's by far the smallest of the platforms that are out there when you compare to eBay and Amazon. Why do you want to limit your selling potential to Poshmark? I see videos on YouTube of people that say they're six-figure sellers on Poshmark, but they don't preface that was, is it over 100,000 per year? or 100,000 since they've been on the platform. It's not very specific. I don't know how much the cost of your goods was. If you're selling 100,000 and 50,000 is what your goods cost, you're only making 50,000, less taxes on that. It's really not that great when you take out those, that piece of information. So when people are saying what they've sold, remember, you need to know what the cost of the goods are. I was watching a video and a reseller on there was breaking it down and they had sold over $70,000 per year on Poshmark, eBay, Etsy, Macari, Kidison, YouTube Revenue. So it took very multiple, multiple streams of income to get to that $70,000 level. Now, again, $70,000 sounds like a lot of money. Take out the cost of your goods and your expenses. Posh fees, 20%. eBay fees are only 10%. So half of that of Poshmark or a little bit more, depending on how they've changed a little bit recently. But it wasn't all on Poshmark. So they have expanded because they understand that multiple streams of income are a better way to get a higher value for reselling, get more eyes on the items that you are selling. Now, Poshmark is a well-known platform and it's a relatively young platform in comparison to the other two. I think it's been around about seven years. But Poshmark is a lot of work. I don't have a ton of time to dedicate all day to Poshmark and sharing and, and following people and you know sending offers to likers. I have a little bit of time and I do use that time to be successful on Poshmark and to make daily sales on Poshmark. But I have realized that it's really important to get to another platform to meet my goals. In 2020, my goal was to make $100 a day, $700 a week as a fashion reseller. Sometimes that was all on Poshmark, sometimes it was Poshmark and eBay, sometimes Poshmark, eBay, Etsy, and sometimes Poshmark, eBay, Etsy, and Facebook Marketplace. Multiple streams of income. And I think that this is kind of how I see Poshmark. A lot of people on there are either part-time resellers, or it's kind of like a side hustle or maybe a hobby. I call myself a part-time reseller, but it's less than that because I do work a full-time job. So I need to maximize my time to maximize my profit. So I would suggest that you 
cross lists to multiple platforms, cross lists to maybe the kids' site or depending on where you are, different access to different websites. So use what's out there, research what's out there. Now, for me, when I was looking at some of these reseller sales, and if they sold $70,000 worth of products a year, they'd have to sell 1,400 items at at least $50 to get to a 70,000 sales level. Now that's just sales, not profit. I didn't sell 1,400 items last year. I sold over 800 items in my first year on Poshmark. And I did, as a combination of all my platforms together, sold over $25,000 last year in my first year. And there is another video coming out that breaks that down for you and how I, where I made my money and, and where I spent my time and what I'm doing for 2021. Or you can sell 2,800 items at $25. That's a lot of shipping, 2,800 items. I don't even, I can't even imagine. <laughs> I just don't have the time to do that. So I had to recognize that in order to grow on Poshmark, I need to do a couple of different things. I really would need to up the number of listings that I currently have on there. And again, I have about 800. I am making daily sales, but to keep jumping higher in sales, I think I'm going to have to jump up in items that I'm listing. And right now I'm listing five a day, and that is about the maximum of what I can handle right now. So I recognize that my growth on Poshmark might be limited. So my target growth for 2021 going from 700 a week to 850, I need to make sure that I get eBay to kick in and get some of that revenue from eBay. Now, I wanna talk about eBay for a couple of minutes. I live in Canada. When I started on eBay, I automatically started on eBay.com. The population of Canada is a lot less than the US, but people in the US can shop on eBay.ca. But this is what the problem was for me. So Canada Post is very expensive to ship. Very, very expensive to ship. So I am finding that my shipping costs were high. I wasn't getting the same exposure that I would be on a different platform. platform. So I wasn't seeing a lot of movement. I wasn't seeing a lot of things happening on eBay. Then I made one change. I started listing on ebay.com. I have an eBay store. I list on ebay.com. As a Canadian seller, why is that good? First of all, the exchange rate. If I sell something in Canada for $50 and I sell something in the U.S. for $50, that $50 U.S., I'm going to get about another 20% back on that. So I'm actually making more. I'm making about $60 as opposed to $50 in Canada. If I ship in Canada, what might cost $32, which is something I recently sent out in Canada, I can use a third-party service provider, a service provider in terms of a transportation company. So I use Chit Chats Express. I can ship an item to California for $14, and it cost me $32 to ship to Quebec in Canada. Your geography does not have to be great to realize that from Nova Scotia to Quebec, Nova Scotia to California, it's a vast difference. So my shipping costs are also lower to ship to the U.S. So when I post on eBay.com, I can post at the Canadian price but get paid in U.S. dollars, and I can ship it cheaper to the U.S. So it just makes good economical sense for me to post on ebay.com and get those sales in American dollars. Yes, it does make a big difference. So eBay, when I started looking at eBay, which was a few months ago, and I'm, like I say, I'm just really getting into it in the past couple of months of being really, really diligent and cross-posting and being active on the platform every single day, I was afraid of eBay because of the freight aspect. I did not know what size box I was shipping in anything in. I did not know how much it was going to weigh. So I was a little bit afraid of that, and I jumped back and said, I'm not ready for eBay. Not ready. And then another couple months went by, and I'm like, okay, I need to get back into eBay. And I did get back into it, and when I started selling product, I started to understand what my freight costs were going to be 
from real time orders that I shipped. So now I can post something on eBay and I can give a generalized number and know that I'll have covered that when I ship that through Chit Chats Express. I actually make money on freight because I add enough freight on items going to the US plus a few extra dollars because I'm not 100% sure when I ship things how heavy they are or what size the box is. I try and cover my bases. So sometimes I make money on the freight as well. And again, I'm a Canadian. When you convert US dollars to Canadian dollars, for me, it's a very favorable exchange rate. So I just want to address the issue of customs duties and taxes when shipping cross-border. So when I'm sending product from Canada to the US, it is an exchange rate differential. Perfect, that's fine. But depending on the product, there could be duties and taxes that are on top of that that a buyer would have to pay. We in Canada can ship at least $800 to someone in the U.S. and they will not be charged a duty in tax. They have an $800 limit on which they can purchase from Canada and not be hit with duties and taxes. In Canada, I can buy approximately $160 from the U.S. and anything over $160, I'm actually going to be charged duty and taxes for anything you bring into the U.S. from the U.S that's over $160. So that's a problem for us in Canada too. So I know I can sell, <laughs> I wish I was selling $800 to everybody in the, that bought something from my eBay store, but that's not true. So I'm not worried about another cost on, to on top of that based on you know the clothing and the shoes and things that I sell through eBay. So it's very, very good for uh, eBay people to buy from Canada because they're not gonna get that duty and tax on top of that. So there's lots of different benefits for shipping on ebay.com or ebay.ca. You can choose what you would like to do. I just realized over time that I'm finding that ebay.com is a better option for me. So in terms of what I want to talk about today, I want to make sure that everyone is aware that cross-listing is absolutely the way you need to go if you want to grow as a reseller eBay is a great alternative. Again, the $12 billion a year in sales, you want a little piece of that. I'm not familiar with Amazon FBA in terms of I've never done it. I have researched it uh, and it's certainly doable and it's a big undertaking and it's something I would recommend that you do a lot of research in before you jump into that basket as well. There are costs attached to it. And when I researched it, again, I'm not ready to be on Amazon. I thought I could sell books on Amazon and make money that way. There's not really a lot of money in books, uh, selling used books through Amazon. And I'm not going to go out to the dollar store and pick up items that I see people on YouTube buying Dawn soap and things like that. I'm just not ready to be an Amazon FBA seller. And I don't think I ever will because I just don't have that time in my life to be a full-time reseller of anything, fashion reseller, or if I branched into other goods and home goods. Etsy. Again, another platform for those vintage items out there, or if you're a crafter out there, then that's a perfect option you know, for you to display your, your goods online and, and get some exposure. And then Facebook, it's something that you can post on right away. Right now, there's no fees to post on uh, Facebook. Uh, eventually, there, there probably will be fees on that. I heard they were coming in 2021, but haven't heard if it's happened yet. And I certainly haven't been hit with any of those targets. So, I wanted you guys to know the truth on what it takes to be a fashion reseller in 2021. I encourage you to open your horizons and look at other options. Even if they're scary at first, you will get over that hump. You will learn what you're doing over time. Will you be doing it perfectly? No, absolutely not right out of the gate. But it is so worth it to you know, maximize the time you spend shopping and buying to put on Poshmark to cross-list that on eBay. It does take a little bit of time, it absolutely does. But you're getting your exposure from Poshmark to eBay, it's, it's a skyrocket of how many people you're gonna hit on the eBay platform versus Poshmark. And eBay, I can put things on there and basically forget about them. Every once in a while I go through and I do offers to likers, but eBay even tells me when I can do that. I don't have to figure that out myself. eBay sends me an email and says, how about you send some offers to likers? I'm like, all right, I can do that. One more thing about eBay that I do like that Poshmark does not offer, and that is I can run a sale on my eBay store. I can run a sale. To run a sale on Poshmark? No. <laughs> People do it, but I have not 
found that it's worth my time to be able to go through and list items and go two for 20 on everything. It's just, again, not, not time. The time is not spent well for me, so I don't want to do it on Poshmark. But eBay, I go in, under marketing, I can set whatever I want as a sale. I can offer 10% everything in my store, 20% off anything in my store, $10 on everything over $75. I am running my store, and I can set a promotion and forget it. I start the, the day it starts, I put in the day it ends, and then it's over. And having the ability to be active on the eBay platform through running a promotion is very favorable to the eBay algorithm. And hopefully that brings more people and more eyes to the things that I'm selling on eBay. So I am looking to maximize my potential in 2021, and I hope that you are looking to do so as well. So if you enjoyed the content in today's video, on your way out, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give me a like on your way out. Drop me a note in the comments, and I'll see you in my next video.